Smacking, cracking, and watching. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe. Law and Order, True Crime, The Menendez Brothers, Season 1, Episode 2. Wow. Let's get into it. You know what I'm really enjoying about this episode, you guys? The visuals, the church. In the church, we have these paintings of Jesus in the crucifixion. We see people smoking on an airplane. What? Dr. Ozell giving us all kinds of early 90s, late 80s man. His whole swag is so old school that, my goodness. Him with his mistress taking the call, I think, from his wife. What? I love the tennis court scene. The style of the Menendez brothers, which is preppy, boat shoes, khakis, short shorts, dress shirt with a sweater on top, the vehicles, everybody has a Jeep Wrangler in this. I'm, I'm looking at Jeep Wranglers like, dang, man, they look kind of nice. Leslie with the little Bo Peep curls, okay? Even down to her husband's Tommy Hilfiger polo. Vintage. They're keeping it in the time frame that it needs to be. Out the gate, they kept it real with us. They are showing us how Leslie, the lawyer, how deep she's willing to go for her clients. No matter what horrible crime these guys have committed, she's still willing to be human about it, wash their face, find out what they did. And then at the same time, hey, she can get them off, she can't get them off. Her job before her marriage, her job, her career before her family. I, ho I really hope that they continue to show that aspect of the show. They really didn't do that with uh, the OJ one. With um, Marsha Clark, we've just seen everything just all kind of messed up with that chick. I'm just saying. Homegirl's cleaning blood from her fingertips, and the boys are at a car lot, balling out of control, just buying Porsches, everything. With the money, funds are just flying all over the place, and it's just giving a red flag to the police officers to say, oh. Look at their habits. Lyle is the ringleader. Eric's still squirmish. But Lyle dropped something really important. He said it was his reaction. And I'm pretty sure they are going to play on those words throughout the rest of this series. What did you? What do you guys think? These brothers are killers, but they're still dreaming. They really think that no one's going to find out what they did, and they're still going to be able to go into be a professional athlete and... Wow, it's crazy. They're just still continuing life. Just like I'm sure it's a bunch of people shooting. Your, your neighbor, your co-worker has done some foul stuff along the way in their life. So who knows what people have, what, what people have been through prior to you crossing their path. But these guys did a horrible crime to their parents, Jose and Kitty. Wow. In this episode, we are learning more about how the boys feel about their father, Jose. How do they how do they feel the dad treated them throughout their life? We know he's knowledgeable. We know he knows everyone. We know he has an affair, which I think he was messing around with that secretary who knew everything. He's demanding. He has high standards. They said that one of the boys said that their dad would not want to be associated with a certain type of label. He yelled a lot at the boy, not to be confused for support. And the biggest one was, the biggest clue they dropped on us, the biggest little Easter egg was, master your emotions. He told us to master our emotions. <laughs> However, did not look, now listen, 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 listen. Didn't I tell y'all he had a toupee? I know I told y'all episode one that boy had a toupee. You know he's got a rug on his hair. If you have a toupee, you got a carpet on, you know what, that's okay. Just do you, do you, do you. I mean, if you want to rock it like that, rock it like that. If not, just take it off. It's your natural hair choice. But if you're willing to let it go, just let it go. The detective is good. You know why he's good? Because he is pinning the brothers against each other slowly but surely. He knows it's a mental game and that they're not wired too tight. So if you can get one of them to turn on the other, maybe you'll get that, that definite, hey, this is what happened. The detective didn't get receive that answer. The therapist did. Dr. Ozil got that. We did it. I couldn't believe it. I said, oh my gosh. We knew he was squirmish. We knew he was sweating and having these bad anxiety attacks. And sure enough, Eric admits to the doctor, we did it. Dang. This episode is about motive, the money, privacy. Do you really have it? Evidence, the proof. Where's the gun? Where's the casings? What's up with the brothers? Why is he so 
rude every time he's at a restaurant. Is it because he's mimicking what his father did every meal? His friend kind of played him by recording a conversation, but I mean, everybody wants to get how they can get. It. But at the same time, even though if, if you're being, if he's being recorded, why would on earth would he say blowing out somebody's brains? Dr. Daddy, Dr. Daddy, for real? This mistress is berserk. Uh-uh, Miss Mistress Lady. No, 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 no. She wants to be the main chick so bad, it's dangerous. She already at one point tried to commit suicide. She put her head in the oven, had to note, be, be with me or I can't do this anymore. Promise me you'll leave your wife. This fool, Dr. O, so stupid that he moved this idiot in, the psychopath in with his family, his daughter. She tested the wife, went straight to the wife, said what she said, rude to the daughter, said, hey, I'm messing with your dad and he's going to leave you. He doesn't love you. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that he pillow talked in episode one, saying what he said screwed him over. Bottom line, nothing can come good from being dirty. Moral of the story. It's always about money, man. Lyle and Eric are in jail. Woo! We got Shapiro, Robert Shapiro up in this thing. Shocked because the last time I saw the guy, he was with OJ, played by John Travolta, and we know how that case went. <laughs> Shouts out to Johnny Conquer. So Leslie's gonna represent Eric. She already knows what it is and she knows what it's not. She knows the story's baloney. The craziest point of a shocker, because like I said, this episode is we're learning about how they felt about their father. That would be the motive. Jeopardy dinners. Dad quizzed. The dad throwing these questions out. Give me the answer. Belittling his son. Being raw, rude, unreal. That's not how you should talk to your child ever. Two counts of murder. That's what they looking at, y'all. This episode was off the chain. What do you guys think? We already know what history says. We've seen the documentaries. We've read the articles. My thing is, what do you think about this series right now? How do you think it's being portrayed? I think it's off the chain. I love Edie Falco representing in this show. She's great. Shouts out to MC Hammer. Right at the moment where the police, at the moment where his vehicle is boxed in by the police and he gets apprehended, I loved it. Can't touch this. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. my 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 review is finished y'all until next week i'll see you next tuesday same time same place like comment and subscribe eh, peace